it's time for story time again at Carlsbad Public Library. I'm Mrs. Neiman, the librarian, and I'm here to share some stories. We'll review our alphabet letter for the day. Uh, we'll make a fun craft, and I hope you have a good time and enjoy. Before we get on uh, to the story time itself, I want to remind you that we are um, celebrating Dr. Seuss's birthday at the library all month. And we have a fun little uh, quiz you can do here at the library if you want to bring your children down to do the quiz. It's easy and fun. <clears throat> and after they finish it, they will get a couple fun little prizes. We also have some coloring packets um, if you'd like to pick those up. So um, please feel free to come and do that sometime this month and uh, get your little prizes. We've got uh, hat the hat pencils. We've got some temporary tattoos and we have some fun little buttons for your backpack or your shirt or whatever you want to wear them on. So you can come and pick what button you like to. So hopefully you'll come and do that this month. Um, okay, so let's get started. First of all, um, our theme today is going to be St. Patrick's Day. So you might think I'm going to use the letter P, but I'm actually going to use the letter R. Why? Because on St. Patrick's Day, um, a lot of people like to tell stories about the leprechauns who have gold at the end of the rainbow. So we're going to look a little bit at uh, rainbows and so forth. So let's do letter R. Here is our letter R. Now you notice uh, some of our alphabet letters, the small letter and the capital letter look the same. Um, in the case of R, they look different. So R is kind of a complicated one. Let's give it a try. We're going to start with a straight line down. Then we're going to go back up to the top of our line and make kind of a half circle. And then we're going to just slide right down. So a straight line down, a half circle up at the top, and slide right down. That's our capital letter R. Small letter R is pretty easy. It's just a straight line down and a little hook on the top a straight line down, and a little hook on the top. The sound of letter R is er. Can you say er? Pretend you're driving a little imaginary car. Er. <laughs> and what animal do we see here? You know what that is? That's a rabbit, isn't it? A nice, friendly rabbit. I have a few little items here in my um, alphabet collection, and I want to see if you can guess what I'm thinking of. All right, this is a color crayon, and we often use it to color things like hearts. Can you think of what color starts with the letter R? Did you think of this color? Red starts with the letter R. Is red your favorite color? Maybe you have a different favorite color. Okay, this is another thing I'm thinking of. Um, this is something that you can wear um, um, on your hand, on your finger, and it starts with the letter R. Can you guess what it is? Did you say a ring? I've got a couple rings here. This one's a mood ring. Um, <laughs> it's a kid size, so it doesn't fit on my hand. <clears throat> and then this one is a little plastic ring that has a star on it. You see, there's the ring back here. So a ring starts with letter R. Now I'm thinking of a kind of a flower. Um, this is a very beautiful flower and it often has a very nice fragrance. Um, people grow them in their gardens sometimes. Sometimes people give them as gifts and it starts with letter R. Can you think of a flower that starts with the sound R? R did you think R? Rose? Rose starts with letter R. And here's another one. This is a little bead one. So it's got a little hole in it. So if you wanted to make a uh, necklace out of it, you could put that on a necklace. So that's letter R. Um, and here's another rabbit I have in my little collection. Since we already talked about rabbits, you know that stuff is letter R. But isn't this a cute little toy rabbit? He's even got a little cotton tail on the back. And he looks so friendly. And then I've got one more animal one to, sh to have you guess. So this is an animal that, um, well, we wouldn't like to see it in our house unless it was our pet. And we most people don't keep these as pets, but some people do. Um, and sometimes 
They will be found at farms in barns or in big cities looking for food near the trash cans. It starts with letter R. It's a short a short word. Can you think of it? Maybe, maybe not. It's I'm thinking of this little guy. He's a rat. Ah, he's a really small little white rat. <laughs> okay, one more and then we'll move on, I think. Okay, um, this is something that you can use. Oh gosh, there's a lot of uses for it. Um, it's stretchy and when you stretch it out and let go, it goes right back into shape. You could use it to um, uh, gather a few things together if you wanted to. Um, some people use them in their hair. To keep their hair. Can you think of it? Did you think of a rubber band? Look how it stretches and it goes back. Stretches and it goes back. So that um, that is a letter R word as well. Okay, so um, letter R, it's a good letter. Maybe you have a letter R in your name. We are going to look at someone's name a little bit later. I hope I don't forget to do it um, because I think it will help you out. Okay, Let's learn a couple things about St. Patrick's Day. Um, let's talk a little bit about some of the symbols of St. Patrick's Day that you might see around. Here we have a leprechaun character. Um, the color green is often connected with Ireland and St. Patrick's Day. St. Patrick is the patron saint of Ireland. Um, it has been Ireland's national color since the 19th century. So the color green is something you'll see on St. Patrick's Day. The leprechaun is also a symbol of St. Patrick's Day. Um, in Ireland, a leprechaun is a little type of, of fairy. There's lots of little stories about fairies in our books, and leprechauns go along with that tradition. Okay, and then sometimes people eat special foods on um, St. Patrick's Day, such as corned beef and cabbage. In the um, early America, um, there were many people who came to America to settle from Ireland, and they brought their holiday uh, with them. So they, um, that, that not only Irish people, but other people also enjoy celebrating St. Patrick's Day. Sometimes there are parades in different parts of the country. Um, and let's see. In St. Patrick's Day itself, um, it was typically celebrated as a religious holiday, but then it became a little more of a fun holiday and um, more of a festive time. So, and now again, I guess it's going back a little more towards a religious holiday. You celebrate it however you want. So we are going to celebrate St. Patrick's Day by making a fun little craft of a rainbow. So let's get started with some stories. This one is called, There Was an Old Lady Who Swallowed a Clover. It's by Lucille Calandro. And Lucille has quite a few books in this little old lady series. If you like this one, you might like to check out some of our other ones too. <clears throat> there was an old lady who swallowed a clover. I don't know why she swallowed the clover, but she didn't roll over. There was an old lady who swallowed a daisy. She wasn't lazy when she swallowed a daisy. She swallowed the daisy to brighten the clover. I don't know why she swallowed the clover, but she didn't roll over. You know, this is based on a song too, so I could sing it for you. There was an old lady who swallowed a butterfly. She did not sigh when she swallowed the butterfly. She swallowed the butterfly to rest on the daisy. She swallowed the daisy to brighten the clover. I don't know why she swallowed the clover, but she didn't roll over. <clears throat> there was an old lady who swallowed a bird. It wasn't absurd when she swallowed a bird. She swallowed the bird to guide with the butterfly. She swallowed the butterfly to rest on the daisy. She swallowed the daisy to brighten the clover. I don't know why she swallowed the clover, but she didn't roll over. <clears throat> what is on this page? 
there was an old lady who swallowed a pot. Believe it or not, she swallowed a pot. She swallowed the pot to carry the bird. She swallowed the bird to glide with the butterfly. She swallowed the butterfly to rest on the daisy. She swallowed the daisy to brighten the clover. I don't know why she swallowed the clover, but she didn't roll over. This is just nonsense, isn't it? Oh, goodness. There was an old lady who swallowed some gold. I would not recommend that. It wasn't cold, all that shiny gold. She swallowed the gold to fill up the pot. She swallowed the pot to carry the bird. She swallowed the bird to glide with the butterfly. She swallowed the butterfly to rest on the daisy. She swallowed the daisy to brighten the clover. I don't know why she swallowed the clover, but she didn't roll over. <clears throat> oh my goodness, what's she gonna swallow next? A fiddle. There was an old lady who swallowed a fiddle. It is a riddle why she swallowed a fiddle. The old lady started to dance, and before she was done, a little leprechaun joined in the fun. As they twirled high and low, she giggled so much. Oh, Captain Rainbow, there's all the things that she followed coming right back all different colors of the rainbow. A yellow daisy, a red bird, a green clover, a blue butterfly, a bright golden orange pot, a brown fiddle. And at the end, our little leprechaun friend says, Happy St. Patrick's Day. And what do we see here? <clears throat> Here's our rainbow up at the top. Here's a clo uh, four leaf clover. That's another sign of uh, that we sometimes see at St. Patrick's time. You see these little four leaf clovers. They're supposed to bring good luck. And they have a sip. And I think the windiness is making my throat scratchy. I want to show you this little guy. I brought him because I wanted to check and see if you'd help me figure out if he has all the rainbow colors. Do you see any red dots? Here's a red dot. Here's another one. This is on his elbow. Do you see any orange? Let's see. Oh, I see some orange on his toe. I do. Do you see some more? There's some more. There's a little bit over here. Uh, how about some yellow? Do you see any yellow? Why, this whole guy is yellow, isn't he? And what about some green? Do you see any green on this guy? I see some green dots. There's one. There's one there. There's one right on his tummy. Um, okay, how about blue? Do you see any blue? Oh, I see some. Here's one right here. And here's some here. And here's another one right on his tummy. Okay, how about purple? See any purple? I see a purple on his shoulder. <clears throat> and I see purple on his toe. <laughs> He's a funny, crazy guy, isn't he? Let's look at Ruby's rainbow. This is by Rosemary Wells. And as you know, Ruby has a little brother named Max. Max, Grandma is coming over, says Max's sister Ruby. Let's paint rainbows for her. Here is a smock and a beret. Outside, says Max. No, Max, says Ruby. You can't go outside right now. It's raining. Here's their paint and their paintbrush. <clears throat> They're wearing their artist clothes. Ruby began her painting. What's the first color in a rainbow? Ruby asked herself. Max, do you know, said Ruby. But Max was sneaking away to the kitchen. In the kitchen, Max put on his red boots. Max, where are you? Said Ruby. Max was not in the living room anymore. Ruby found Max in the kitchen. Going outside, said Max. No, Max, said Ruby, you can't go outside. 
it's still raining. But look, your boots are red, the first color of the rainbow. Come and paint, Max. <clears throat> Back in the living room, Ruby made a big red arc on her paper. Beautiful, she said. Max, how are you doing with your painting? Said Ruby, but Max wasn't there. He stuck up again, that little Max. Ruby found Max in the kitchen again. He had taken off his hat beret and put on his rain hat. Going out, said Max. No, Max, said Ruby can't go outside, it's still raining. But look, your hat is orange. That's the second color of the rainbow. Let's go back to our paintings, Max. Ruby continued to paint her rainbow. She made an orange arc on her paper. Right under the red one. Beautiful, said Ruby. Max, how's your painting coming along? But Max was gone again. Oh. Now what did he put on? Let me get another picture. I can definitely tell it's allergy season. Okay, Ruby found Max in the kitchen again. He had taken off his art smock and he put on his yellow raincoat. Going out now, Max said. You can't go outside, Max. Why can't he go outside? because it's raining. <clears throat> but look, Max, your raincoat is yellow. Yellow comes after orange in the rainbow. Let's finish our rainbow painting. Back in the living room, Ruby painted a yellow arc right under the orange one. What color is next, she said. Max, said Ruby. Well, guess what? He still wasn't there. Ruby went outside to look for Max. He was in the backyard. He was wearing his red boots, his orange hat, and his yellow raincoat. Max, you can't play outside in the rain. But the rain had almost stopped. Look, said Max, in the sky was a beautiful rainbow. A real rainbow, said Ruby. Green, blue, dark blue, and purple. The next colors for my rainbow. Come on, Max, let's finish our paintings for Grandma. A little while later, Grandma came over. Max and Ruby each had a painting for her. Rainbows, said Max. Beautiful, said Grandma. You got the colors just right. You know, this week, just yesterday, in fact, I got a nice envelope with some drawings from my grandson. He made a Pikachu and he colored a farm scene for me and he did some little drawings. It was really nice. So I appreciate those. I bet your grandma or aunt or uncle or someone far away would appreciate a painting or a drawing from you in the mail. Okay. <clears throat> so I've got one more book, but it's getting to be almost a half an hour. So I'm just going to hold this up and tell you. We do have more St. Patrick's Day books here in the library. You're welcome to come and get them. Now, remember I said I was gonna tell you about a little man's name. I have a leprechaun friend right here. His name is Roy G. Biv. It's kind of a funny name, but when you um, think about it, you can remember the colors of the rainbow. Red, orange, yellow, those start with the letters for the word Roy. Red, orange, yellow. His middle initial is G for green. And his last name is Biv. Blue, indigo, which is dark blue, and violet, which is purple. I don't know if you can see that little sign, but if you can remember this little funny leprechaun named Roy G. Biv, you'll always know the colors of the rainbow and you won't have to wonder like Ruby did in our story. So next thing we're going to do, I'm going to work on our craft with you. So if you got a craft kit, you got something that looks like this to use today. Um, what you have is some colorful strips of paper. You have a little bit of yarn. 
and you have a little cloud to cut out, which we will do together. And then at the back of your packet, you have a few other items. Um, you can do a little craft, another craft activity with a pattern on the back. Here's a coloring page. And here is uh, some directions to make rainbow popcorn. That does sound like a good snack. And if you want to, you can make a little pair of rainbow glasses to try on. Okay, so that should keep you busy for a couple of days. Now, here is our craft we're going to make. So the first thing we're gonna do is cut out our cloud shape. That's pretty easy to do. Please notice there's a couple of punch outs there. We'll use those in a minute. So I've got my, I'm gonna push this down. There. Okay, so here is my cloud. Let me cut that out with you. So if you've been doing story times along with me this year, we have had quite a few crafts that let you practice your cutting. So I hope your cutting skills are getting a little bit better. Take your time, do a little practice. Um, sometimes it's easier to learn how to use your scissors. Um, thank you, Isella, I see your comment there. I like that you comment. So practice your scissor skills, take your time. If you have some gummy worms at home, those are really fun to practice cutting on because they really let you uh, uh, get into the scissors. <laughs> okay, so this is our first thing we have is our cloud. And while we're using our cloud, we might as well go ahead and draw a little face on. Now this is one face you could try to draw. This little face has both eyes looking over this way and a nice smile. So I'm gonna get out my crayon. I think I'm gonna use a blue crayon. And I'm gonna draw a slightly different face, but that's okay. Because we can all do our own artistic things. So a little smile and a couple of eyes. These I just made looking straight out. Okay, now what are we gonna do with all these strips of paper? Um, we are going to try to remember Roy G. Biv and put them in order. So let's check out and see if our sample. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. So over here on this side, we're going to start with the red strip. And if you have blue, that would be great. Tape would work. I'm going to use some glue from a glue stick today. Um, this kind of glue also would be just fine and we're going to glue them on the back or tape them or however you're going to do it. So we're going to start over here. I'm going to put a little bit of glue on the back of my cloud. It's going to go right across. So I've got lots of glue down there on the opposite side. Oh, you know what? I need a little bit more right there. Okay. So I'm going to, oops, I think I need a little more over here too. Okay, I think I got enough. So I'm gonna start with my red, go right over here. Next color, maybe I should hang this up so you can look and see. What's our next color? It's yellow, I think. No, nope, it's orange. Orange next. Okay, and then it's yellow. I, I glue, I'm just gluing right back here. Then we have green. There's our green. You have your light blue. Then we have indigo, dark blue. And finally we have violet. Okay, now that you have uh, your rainbow hanging, uh, strips down. It looks pretty good, but let's put our yarn up at the top so we can hang the yarn, um, hang the um, cloud and rainbow up on the window or the door or whatever you would like. So just get out your yarn and we'll put it. Um, if you don't know how to tie, you might need help with this. So put it through one hole, 
take the other end and we'll put that through this hole here. All right, now we need to tie it. When I tie things like this, I hold them together, I make a loop, and then I put the ends through the loop and pull, just like that. And now we have a hanger for our rainbow. And that is that. Okay, well, we are to the end of our story time. On Thursday, we will have a Mother Goose time at 10 o'clock. And I hope I'll see you there, or maybe, maybe you're too big for that. Maybe you just like story time. It's up to you. Uh, be sure to come by and play our little Dr. Seuss game so you can get uh, some prizes. They're free and it's a fun game and we'll help you out. Okay, have a great day. Bye-bye.